Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson here, and I'm here to bring you your lesson video for the learning target on scatter plots using scatter plots. Uh, the first example up at the top of our page says, all states and the District of Columbia have enacted laws setting 21 as the minimum drinking age. Um, the table shows the estimated cumulative number of lives saved since reducing or by reducing traffic fatalities. Okay, so we want to take the table and plot the information using a scatter plot or on a scatter plot. So I'm going to, in my table, treat the time as X and the number of lives saved as Y because years or time is always the independent variable. So down here on the bottom, you can see that we have 98, 99, 2000, 01, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So I'm going to plot the information given to me. Um, 1999 was about 19.1, so it'd be about up here. 2000 was 20, 2001 was 21, 2002 was about 22 or close to it. 2003 was about 23, or a little underneath. And then the question is, what will 2015 be? So there's our scatter plot of the data. And now the next thing that we want to do is we want to draw a line of best fit. So if we draw a line of best fit through this data, we just want to come as close to all of the data points as possible. So my line of best fit might look something like that. So it's a linear equation, a straight line and we just want to come as close to it as possible. Then the next part is describe the correlation. Correlation means what is Y doing as X increases. So as X moves to the right, is Y going up or down? So if we look at X going to the right, we can see that Y is going up. That means that we have a positive correlation. For this graph because as x increases y increases as well and then write a prediction equation so here's where we need to kind of get out some of our math skills so um, when i write a prediction equation it's going to be in the form of y equals mx plus b so that means i need to find the slope and i need to find the y-intercept so i'm going to start with slope i'm just going to pick two points that are on my line i'll use 2020 and 2002 and 22. so those are my two points the year was 2000 the time was 20 and this one was 2002 and that was or not the time the number of lives i mean and that was 22. And by the way, these are number of lives in thousands. That's why the number is so small, because it's actually 20,000 or 22,000. So if I find the slope for that, I'm going to take the difference in y's over the difference in x. And I end up with 2 over 2, which is 1. So I have a slope of 1. And then I also need to find the y-intercept. So for, in this case, to find the y-intercept, I'm going to use point-slope form. So I'm just going to pick the 2020 point because that's one that I used for my slope as well. And I'm going to drop it into point-slope form. I end up with y minus the 20 is equal to uh, 1, because that's my slope, times x minus the 2000. Distributing 1 doesn't change anything. That's still y minus 20 equals x minus 2,000. And then I add 20. And I get y is equal to x minus 1980. So that's my prediction equation there. What that tells me is that my y-intercept is 1,980. Okay, that's my y-intercept there. And if you think about it, this line is going to keep going down backwards this way and notice that we're at 1998 here so if I went all the way down it kind of makes sense that I'd be at 1000 negative 1980 since I'm at about positive 15 right there so then I want to use that prediction equation that I'm created to find the number of lives saved in 2015 so now that I have a prediction equation I can take 2015 and plug it in so I'm gonna have y equals 2015 minus 1980 and when I subtract those two I end up with about 35 so that means 35,000 lives will 
be saved by traffic fatality by reducing traffic fatalities in 2015. Okay, so scatter plot, drawing the data, plotting the data, drawing the line of best fit, coming as close to all those points as possible, and then um, writing the prediction equation from there, finding the slope, finding the y-intercept, then we can use it to find any year that we want. I could ask you, what will it be in 3015? And you could plug that in as well. Let's just talk about the correlation aspect of scatter plots for a second. Um, scatter plots that have a positive correlation, I talked a little bit about saying that as x increases, y also increases. Scatter plots with a negative correlation give you a negative sloping line, which means as x increases, y now decreases. And then some, there are some scatter plots, some data just is too random for us to find correlation, and that would be data that's just all over. And you can see there, you can't tell if it's positive, you can't tell if it's negative, so we call that no correlation. The line of best fit is the line that closely approximates a set, a set of data. Line that closely approximates a set of data. And the prediction equation is the linear equation that graphs the line of best fit. All right, so let's take a look at our next example. In our next example, now we're looking at uh, the table that shows the amounts of times five different students studied for their AP studied for their AP Euro exam and the grades that they got. So the first thing that we want to do is make a scatter plot of the data. So we have the table, and again, time is always my independent variable. So I'm going to make that my x, make that my y. This time the table is not labeled for us, so we're going to have to label it ourselves. Um, my x values, I start at 1 and go up to 12, so I think I'm going to start here and count by 2s. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, that will give me enough space. And my y values, they start at 70, so I'm going to do one of these little which means you have crunched down that piece of the line, and then I'm just going to start at like 60, and I'll count by 10s from there. 80. 90, 100. Okay. Now, obviously, I don't think it's possible for us to get above 100 on the AP Euro exam, but, you know, that's okay. We have the space on our graph that we need. So now, if I plot these as coordinates, that means I'm at 580. So right about there. 995 is going to be right about there. 375, right about there. 1298, 12 and 98, and then 1 and 70. So then I want to um, find the following for the line of regression. I'm going to write, end up writing a prediction equation, which means I need to find the slope and the y-intercept, because remember those prediction equations are in the form of y equals mx plus b. Um, so if I pick a couple points while well, I could draw my line in. So let's see, my line could go kind of like this. That's pretty close to all the points. Um, and then I need to pick two points that are on that line. I'm going to use this one right here because I see that it's right on a grid line, which is helpful. Uh, that would be 890. And maybe the 4 and about 78. We'll say that's the other one. So I'm going to use those two points to find the slope. I would take 90 minus 78 over 8 minus 4, and that is going to be equal to 12 over 4, which is 3. So my slope is going to be 3. All right, I'm going to stop our video there. I want you to figure out the y-intercept. See if you can figure out the y-intercept. 
and write the equation line and then see if you can do part C, figure out how, what the score might be using your prediction equation for 10 hours of studying. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hop back to Schoology and take that little quiz. I'll see you guys tomorrow.